Hi, I'm Zach with Josh's Frogs. And this is Austin. Hi, Austin. Today we're going to show you how to use a 12-12-18 Exoterra Glass Terrarium and make a basic waterfall in a vivarium. These will be built for some Saturday Night Reed Frogs. First off, we'll use the Reptiflow 200 Terrarium Pump. It's very It's very important to test your pump before putting it into the vivarium because once you install it the way we're going to show you, you will not be able to remove it. Austin, go ahead and put the, the pump in the vivarium. He's placing it in the back corner there where the source of water is going to be, unobstructed, and then he's plugging the cord into the little doohickey hole things in the back of the exoterra tank there. Very good, Austin. Here you can see the pump installed in the bottom corner of the terrarium. Next, we're going to install the tubing to the pump. For this, we're going to use the Laguna half-inch reinforced tubing. This is spiraled, so it'll actually hold up unlike a lot of vinyl tubing well. This stuff will not collapse when you foam it into place later. Austin, install your tubing. Now the, the tubing is shoved firmly into the pump. Notice the tubing length we're installing is actually about six to eight inches longer than what we'll actually need there just so we can position it properly and then we'll shave off the excess after the foam is hardened. You want a little extra tubing sticking out of the background when you foam it to make sure that it, the end of it does not get covered with foam or else you will be in trouble. Next we'll install the planting rock available on joshesfrogs.com. We just recently started carrying this product and we're very excited. It's realistic and it's actually designed to plant live plants directly in there. So Austin, go ahead and put the planting rock in the terrarium. We're going to be placing this planting rock along the bottom there, or what will be the bottom in the future, actually act as a retaining wall that will hold back our gravel substrate we're going to surround the plant with, and the pump with, and it will make a nice little clip there, you see. Now we're ready to begin positioning the fake rock background in the tank. Insert any fake rocks, pieces of cork, other pieces of wood like that one at a time, using them to kind of hide and support each other. Let them hide the cord hide the hose. Make sure you don't put too much weight on the hose so it doesn't kink, even though with this stuff we have here it shouldn't kink. Uh, make sure when you're positioning the rock work that it kind of supports each other, even though you will be foaming this into place, and that you're positioning the hose so you'll eventually, after it's foamed into place, you'll be able to position it the way it is after the foam hardens up. There we go. Beautiful, Austin. Austin is now ready to spray foam the background in place. First off, make sure you have adequate protection for the job, i.e. gloves, great stuff, foam is sticky, and you're going to want to lay out paper towel on your work surface to make sure that as the great stuff foam expands, it might come out of the top of the tank. You don't want it, you're gluing your tank to your dining room table. So Austin's going to go ahead and do that there. Then he's going to grab his great stuff spray foam there. He's going to shake it. This can works. Also the red can with the yellow top works really well on many applications and he's going to start applying the foam to the rock work. And Austin is ready to start foaming the background. He's going to use the applicator and get it in starting at the bottom of the tank, moving forward a little dab at a time. Just keep in mind this stuff expands a lot more than it comes out with. Try to get behind the rock work to fill any cracks your animals might get in. And it's better to do a little too much than a little too little. Go. Notice how the spray foam after it comes out it expands and fills behind the rock work. Just going to gently get in there. It's going to expand quite a bit as it goes, so get it as best you can. You can always go back later and add some more, but it's a lot easier if you can go ahead and get it. After this foaming process is done, you'll want to let it sit unharassed for at least three or four days. Um, we generally recommend about a week or so. And here we are with the tank completely foamed, and we wait, and we wait. Three days, four days, five days, seven days, until the foam is fully cured. Using a serrated kitchen knife, go ahead and cut the foam, roughing up the surface. After the foam is cured, it is smooth on the outside. You want to make sure you cut it, removing any excess foam, and you will leave a rough cut surface um, exposed, which the silicone will stick to much better. Here's the background with the foam after Austin has roughed it up. You can see it's a little bit more jagged looking, which will allow the silicone to adhere to it much better. Now Austin is ready to apply silicone to the background. Austin, don your gloves. Now 
Any day now, Austin. Good job. Now, Austin, we'll apply GE Silicone 2 window and door in brown color on the back of the foam. He globs on a bunch initially, and then he's going to use his hands to spread it. Make sure you work it in over all the cracks and crevices. Try to make sure you cover all exposed foam. And this small job will take, should take one tube of silicone. Since this is such a small tank, Austin will just be applying all of the silicone at once. For larger backgrounds, you may want to go ahead and, you know, finish maybe a quarter to half the background, cover it with coconut fiber, and then proceed so the silicone doesn't dry before you have a chance to add your substrate. Don't worry about any silicone that's smeared on the glass. This can easily be removed with a razor blade after the silicone is dried. After the silicone is applied and covers all of the exposed foam, don a new pair of gloves and cover it with dried coconut fiber or peat moss applying it evenly over the surface. You can throw extra stuff in there and jam it down. Um, it needs to be very, very, very dry to adhere properly to the background and the silicone, otherwise it just won't adhere and fall off. You'll end up with a bunch of bald spots. Um, if you missed a little bit, you can always go back at a later date and apply more silicone and coconut fiber to continue it. Just continue to apply the cocoa fiber and then pat it down on the silicone until all the exposed silicone is covered. Make sure you're ducking the cocoa fiber into all the little nooks and crannies. The stuff that adheres to the silicone will stay there, and when you sand the tank vertically, the stuff that's not adhered will obviously fall out. You can also use a shop vac to suck off and remove any excess cocoa fiber or peat moss. We generally recommend letting the tank sit for at least a day or so until you try to remove any of the cocoa fiber. You give the tank several days before planting. You want the silicone to be completely and utterly cured. Um, generally when silicone is curing, it will have kind of a vinegary smell. So you want to make sure there's absolutely no odor to, the t odor to the tank at all before you put in substrates and put in plants and obviously introduce any animals. To check and see if the silicone is cured, stick your head in a tank. If it smells like vinegar, the silicone is not cured and leave it set for a few days before you try again. Using a razor blade, go ahead and scrape any excess silicone off of the glass that you smeared on there. It should come off very easily. Now that the excess silicone has been removed with a razor blade, it's time to use a shop vac to remove any excess peat that did not adhere to the silicone in the background. Finally, use a razor blade to remove any excess hose that's left over. Here we've put the top, Exoterra Compact Top Canopy, and one of the 13 watt Josh's Frog's Green Grow LED bulbs in the tank. It's now ready for substrates and to finally be planted. For substrate for the Anubias that'll be used at the bottom of this vivarium, we're going to use some of Josh's Frog's False Bottom. We typically use this as a drainage layer, but it works exceptionally well as providing a biological filtration around the pump, as well as providing a substrate that Anubias can thrive in. Anubias are great plants for terrariums and paludariums, especially around water features. We grow several varieties right here at Josh's Frogs. When planting Anubias, it's important not to actually bury the rhizome or roots of the plant. Instead, lightly put it into the pressure on the substrate, making sure that the roots remain above the surface. Additionally, Anubias can be put on the background of the tank as long as they're in the direct water flow and their leaves and roots remain moist. When doing this, don't be surprised if some of the leaves die off. Don't worry, the plant will regrow after it acclimates to its new position. Now we're ready for the cryptocorns, which will go in the front area of the tank. At Josh's Frogs, we work with two basic forms of cryptocorn Wendy's. The red variety, which looks reddish and bright light, and then the green variety, which is a much, much brighter green color. The substrate that cryptocorns require is quite different than Anubias. We prefer a mix of peat and tree fern. 
We'll put them in this rock planter here in the front. First put a very thin base layer down. Next, it's time to position our plant. Try to avoid damaging the roots if you can, but these guys are pretty tough. Now that the cryptocorns are in place, gently pack substrate around them. Now we're ready for some Exoterra riverbed sand along the front of the vivarium. Austin's going to cut a corner off the bag and pour some of the sand into the cup. We do not recommend pouring sand directly from the bag into your tank. It's a lot easier to control if you pour it into a smaller container first. This is a very, very fine sand that will not cloud the water too bad. It's also very heavy. Now use the cup and simply add it to the bottom of the water feature. Careful not to get on any plant leaves. It's kind of a pain in the butt. I pour it down there in the corner and then use your hand to spread it around. Okay. Next, thoroughly mist the back the entirety of the terrarium. This will wet it and prep it for the next step where we apply it to the java moss over some surfaces. Hose it down pretty well and also make sure to get the sand damp. If the sand's already damp, it'll be a lot more likely not to float and it will stay in place better when we add water after we've moved the vivarium to its final resting place. You're now ready to apply some of your aquatic moss. Rickia works pretty well, even though it's technically a liverwort. We prefer java moss. It's widely available and, best part about it, it's cheap. So you want to slow, carefully divide up your java moss into smaller pieces. Then you can apply those over where the waterfall is going to flow. You want to shove those over any surface that's going to remain damp because of water movement in the tank. Over time, after the java moss takes hold a little bit, it'll actually spread throughout the tank and cover some of the drier areas as long as its base starts out in a wet area. You can put it over the surface of the sand, over the substrate that's holding your plant, and it will over time spread and take on a very, very nice appearance. After you're done applying the java moss, make sure you relo relocate the tank to its final resting place. Then you can add water to the bottom of it. Add the water slowly, a couple cups at a time. Don't pour it directly on the sand or else it'll move it too much out of place. After several inches of water has been added to the bottom of the tank, ready to plug, plug the pump in for the first time. Over time, the java moss will grow into the water feature and spread over the background, the bright light, and the plants below will constantly be moistened by the above water and spread as well. We recommend giving your tank at least a few wick grow in time, if not longer, before adding frogs. For this tank, um, starry night or blueback reed frogs would be a perfect addition down the road.